Welcome back to not my food forest, but some good friends who I've met along the way. Three years ago, I did a consultation job for a lovely couple who actually lives in the city. This is at Young in the 401. They live in an urban environment and wanted to transform their urban property into a food forest. Today, we're gonna to go for a tour. We'll show you what they have growing and maybe it'll give you some ideas for ways that you can transform your own urban property into a system that is quite frankly remarkable even just three years later. Okay, so here we are at the front of their property and one of the things that the clients really really wanted was to showcase permaculture to people who walk by their property so we designed in these beautiful beds right at the entrance we also have because it's the entrance we have pollinator tractors coming right in and then we've got people who walk by greeted with raspberries and then also we've got a little row of house caps is that at some point when these mature that the, the kids and the stores and the, the moms and the parents feel free to actually pick the has caps and the raspberries yeah so this is kind of a really nice way for community building meeting your neighbors uh, greeting people who walk by with a little bit of a treat of has caps and look at these they're already producing look how fantastic this is mm something different is definitely going on here so the aesthetics of this place is kind of paramount we wanted to introduce people to a different way of living but also make it a fantastic and beautiful way of landscaping so the client has access to this wonderful core 10 metal it is a weathering steel and this actually gives the whole entire property a bit of like a mix between industrialized factory but also at the same time natural and we'll see it echo in the rest of the design choices used in the backyard and i don't know if you heard that and right at the front of the property we've got just plants covered in pollinators so an eco-friendly habitat is super important on this project Right here at the side of the driveway, we've actually got a little bit more room and we snuck in a little mini food forest strip. Well, not really that mini even, it's quite large. We've got a Montmorency cherry here. It's a sour cherry that is already starting to fruit. And it's quite sweet. For a sour cherry, it's delicious. I'll bury the cherry. Maybe they'll get a cherry sapling there. We've got gooseberries here that are already starting to fruit. Okay, further into the bed here, we've got two large elderberries. We chose these here because we thought an extra level of visual barrier for the neighbors, but also they're on the north side of this bed, so they're not gonna shade out things like this little nectarine. They said they actually had nectarines on this tree last year. Um, nothing this year, I don't believe. So these plant beds were first amended with uh, trucked in soil, topsoil. So some fantastic soil went in day one uh, to make sure that things got off with a really nice start. Then brought in some wood chips. The owners did all the work for this entire planting. And not just that, we, we are starting from a zero baseline. We have never been gardeners. We have never had a green thumb. We have done nothing more than maintain grass at the other house. Right at the front of the house, we wanted a little bit of an ornamental mix. So we did really want to focus on things that look great as well. So on the other side here, we've got continuation of both beauty and functional plants. We've got lupin, which is a nitrogen fixer. We've got some um, garlic chives. We've got some English lavender here. This here is sweet Sicily. So um, this has like a little anise flavor. It tastes like uh, black licorice. It's actually sweet though. It's actually really, really nice. And you can actually grind these up, put these in soups. That's a really nice flavor. This here is some red valerian. We've got some royal candles, spike speedwell. Here is an ornamental, really cool looking plant. 
And then in the back, well, we've got some Shasta daisies here. And in the back here, we've got some, this is in the Yarrow family, and it's actually called Sneezewort, but it's another great uh, pollinator, but it's got a bit of a different interest, a little bit more of an ornamental flower, which is very interesting. And then in the back there, we've got some valerian. So something different in front of the house, but beautiful and gorgeous and very, very functional for the ecology. All right, let's get into the backyard. So stepping into the backyard here, we've got a little bit of a Jerusalem artichoke welcoming entrance right next to this real nice artsy wall here. Um, the client said that the plants actually got up over top, even a couple feet over top of this wall. He actually loved the Jerusalem artichokes so much that he started spreading them in different areas of his lawn and called this his apocalypse food garden here. Coming up from there, we can start getting in to the rest of the backyard. We've got a food forest strip all down the side, which we'll get to in, the, in a little bit. We've got food forest all down the side, all in this middle area here. And then we've got this fantastic entertainment space here. Couches, gardens. Now the client's kitchen is right here and we wanted to make sure that they had a really nice view looking out from the backyard keep really nice clean sight lines and have tons of pollinators right here right next to the window look at this really really nice milkweed here got this for the butterflies we've got uh, borage down here borage is a fantastic bee food this walks right out into the backyard where we've got some nasturtiums to snack on this is a fantastic forage Really, really beautiful plant as well. Very popular in gardening circles for sure. And then we come right into this back food forest strip that kind of just meanders and waves. We've got some sea berries right on the front here. Um, we've got some lupin and some lilac. We've got some blackberries that I think um, we're gonna move to the back fence here. They opened up a bunch of space by pruning some of these cedars back a little bit. That'll give them access to some a little more real estate back in here. It's kind of funny, you see the, the clients evolve over the years where at first it was kind of, we don't want to intrude too much on some of these gardens and they get the permaculture lifestyle going on and they start cutting in and trying to find more real estate for more food. We've got a couple apples back here. We've got some has caps. We've got actually a row of has caps and some of the largest has caps that I've ever seen in my entire life were on this plant here. We were actually snacking on them. So that was probably not smart. We should have left some. Look at this. This thing is huge. So this is Boreal Blizzard has cap. I think it's always funny when you kind of get into some of these garden beds. You know, it's really a nice little canopy here of this elderberry right inside the backyard of a downtown Toronto house. You've got this fantastic little forest ecosystem. Okay, so then fleshing out the top of the overstory of this guild, obviously we've got these elderberries just going crazy in here. We've got a cherry, we've got a common hackberry here, we've got a peach, and then when we get down into this um, shadier spot under these existing trees here, uh, we did want to get fruit production or at the very least pollination um, addition. So we did a bunch of bush cherries back in here. This is a cornelian cherry. And then this here is an ebony pearl cherry. And then a little further back, we've got a lapins cherry. So this is a little bit of a gateway into the neighbor's property. And I won't really open it because I don't have permission of the neighbors, but the neighbors actually use the client's backyard for the pool. So I love that the neighbors are actually using their backyard to almost, you know, entice their neighbors into this different style of landscaping, edible landscaping. So turning sideways, we're now in the back of the backyard here, and we've got this sprawling strawberry patch. So these are, strawberries that I'd sent them from my property. I brought them with me as a gift one time when I came here. 
and told them to pinch the flowers off and they did diligently and look at the growth on this strawberry patch three years later and we were eating from this earlier so i don't know how many ripe ones there are we've got some more in here as well look at this just absolutely fantastic so i won't go into too much detail about all the creatures that are in this uh, because this video will probably be an hour long and i want to get to some of the other stuff that's going on here but we've got some really cool little wood storage that's happening here just as a, a bit of a prep. Uh, so we've got some extra heat if needed. And then we've got the main compost set up back here, which is actually really, really nice. I like how we oriented it with the back side of this core 10, um, leading to the aesthetics and appeal of the backyard. And then we've got the actual three bin compost set up here. Almost zero yard waste to the curb. We do manage to compost and mulch most. We hardly need a green bin anymore. It's fantastic. So instead of giving the city your fertility, you're keeping it on your own property and then growing incredibly healthy food with it. Okay, so here we're in the back of the backyard, but I actually want to shoot this coming from the other side. So I'm going to quickly walk down there and we'll show you what's going on in the back here. It's really cool. So this is the main entrance into the backyard and the first thing that you're greeted with is this beautiful pool and then also the back shed and greenhouse and just turning you see that it's not just a typical entertainment backyard it's something very different going on here with all this beautiful natural growth this front bed here we've actually got a mulberry and the mulberry um, actually died back to the ground they said it got about 12 feet tall last year and then a little bit of winter death so they pruned it mulberries will do fine up here in our climate and you can see the bounce back already this thing is really really happy there as we walk down and check out the greenhouse and shed back there and the you know the obviously bombing asparagus bed there it's doing fantastic take a look at some of this they really wanted to use every aspect every single garden possible and we've got some beautiful roses we've got this rosa ragosa here and we've got this really really nice fescue grass art decor um, wall here that lights up in the nighttime which i'll hopefully be able to show you later on we've got a bunch of red currants back here and these are some of the largest red currants i've ever seen personally hmm. on this back fence we've got Every single space being used, we've got some cold hardy kiwi. There's two female plants there and there. And then there's a male plant in the middle that didn't do well, got eaten back. So they'll probably have to replace it with another one just to make sure that they get good pollination on these cold hardy kiwis here. We've got a little tight contained bed here. So this is a really good spot for things that want to spread and get out of control a little bit. So this is where we put some of the really nice varieties of raspberries. And you can see that these are just kind of creeping out and loaded up with raspberries this year. And we've got this flame and fury nectarine growing right beside the pond that people may not really understand, but we're in Canada. So a lot of people don't even know that you can grow peaches in Canada. So we wanted to put something that would really attract, you know, what the heck these people are growing peaches next to a pool. So we put that right there as a nice showpiece. And then we've got the greenhouse, which is just getting uh, finalized. So they'll be growing into this. And then just to the side here, we've got some asparagus beds. You can see that they've uh, got female asparagus so they can uh, propagate the berries if they want. Uh, they can dig up runners if they want. And they've already been eating out of this. So this is three years in. And you can see that there's actually some really nice sized asparagus in there already. We've got a garlic bed with some lettuces. And we've got garlic, tomato, lettuces in this bed here. And just turning around here, we've got this little hidden bed back here next to this gorgeous greenhouse. And you can see that the owner has been spreading the Jerusalem artichokes in here. Really, really enjoys not just the fact that he's got food growing here for life. If he never has to do anything for it, he's he's has it here. They made pickled uh, Jerusalem artichokes and they've been cooking with it. So they're confident that they enjoy it. We had kept it in one of those raised beds so it's contained, it won't spread. 
um, the spread under the ground. And we wanted to make sure that the client actually wanted these before we put them into formal garden beds. They decided, yes, they do actually love these and spread them into here. And you can see they've got a fantastic irrigation system that they've all designed in from day one. So we've got a wand watering and then we've also got drip irrigation through the beds. And this way when the clients are out of town and they're not able to check on the, the gardens that they've got um, garden being irrigated. Look at this beautiful swing here. So this is connected all the way up to this top branch of this tree. And they mentioned that they, they saw some photos of uh, wedding photos and they noticed their swing in it. So they had family come and actually take a bunch of photos in their backyard. And I said, this is probably something you're gonna have to get used to because as this place matures and the food forest grows in, you know, this is just a different space than a typical entertainment backyard. And people will want to take wedding photos here and prom photos. It's just a really, really different way of living. And this is just year three. Wait for this place in 10 years. It's gonna be absolutely fantastic. So I did want to mention this garden here because um, this is one that I really enjoyed personally myself because this is kind of a, a real nice guild setup with functional plants that are being actively used. So we've got some Bloody Dock that is a fantastic salad green, very, very healthy and high in iron. We've got Good King Henry and it's actually going to seed right now. So this one is good for salads. It's a perennial, so you never have to worry about it again. It's a little hairy, so you got to kind of wash those hairs off. Um, it's maybe not texturally the, the nicest plant. When it starts to go to seed, it gets a little bit bitter, um, but early in the spring, it's actually a fantastic forage. And then we've got this really, really nice giant lovage plant uh, that the wife had actually got from a friend, a Romanian friend. And I have to say, I've been enjoying my lovage tremendously. And look at this, this is maybe one of the bigger Lovage plants that I've seen, it's just doing so fantastic. The best thing about Lovage is it duels as a really, really nice wildlife plant and pollinator attractor, but then it also makes fantastic soups and stews. And then we've got the overstory elements that are in here growing. So this is a European pear right here. And then alongside this pear here, we've got two more pears right here, and they're in close proximity. And the goal is that over planting like this makes things look really nice when the plants are young and then when they get older we can kind of pick which ones are working the best we can prune them in ways that they explore other areas of the bed and maintain lots of sun but you get weed suppression from you know extra shading at the soil level in the meantime and then we've got more of this uh, bloody dock and good king henry and then leading into a aronia berry bush and a sea berry here in the end. This aronia berry is something that I haven't actually put into my food forest yet, so I'm very interested in it. I'll probably add something like this somewhere in my food forest. I think I actually have a pear myself that didn't survive the winter. Maybe I'll throw an aronia berry in that spot. So then we're coming back up to the party space. And the client said that they really like how the backyard is designed in a bunch of different rooms. So you've got like a little Jerusalem artichoke cubby, you've got a ping pong table entertainment area, you've got like a tea, late night coffee, lounging area, morning coffee, you've got a dining area, we've got the bird feeder, and we've got these kind of market garden style foraging and the wildlife gardens that edge the path into the pool area. We've got this really, really cool secret hideout campfire area. We've got these existing evergreen trees and this hideout campfire nighttime nook. So check out this space here. It's just absolutely gorgeous. And although these aren't permaculture trees, these are fantastic habitat for all sorts of birds, especially in the early spring. So don't feel like you have to permaculturize your entire backyard. It's okay to leave existing high trees. These are fantastic nesting sites for birds and the birds will eat the pests on your fruit trees. So one of my favorite plants in here in the native pollinator 
kind of wildflower box at the front of the backyard, right next to that bay window, is this ostrich fern. This is fiddleheads for people in the foraging spaces who constantly go through the woods and look for fiddleheads in the spring. And why not bring the woods into your backyards? Now these will actually spread. They'll run out and they'll throw a new crown. And they've actually been propagating these all through the back beds here. And doesn't it just add a really nice little forest jungle vibe into this area they've even got this little art piece in the back so you've got this interplay here with you know actual art and then natural art and these areas are right next to the kitchen so it's always good to put a little bit of miracle food in here this is one of the healthiest plants on the planet to get used to eating this is sage it's fantastic for bees and butterflies but it's also one of the healthiest herbs that you can grow throw some of this into a soup and give a little bit of a nutrient boost, miracle food boost to your food. Right next to these gardens here, we've got this fig. So they've been bringing these cold hardy Chicago figs indoors. And this is actually what you should be doing with figs. Not what I do with is just let them kind of die and regrow from the bottom. That does work. This is why some people in Canada will grow figs and you can actually get away with it. But if you really want fig production, should throw them in a little planter box like this and drag them inside uh, in the winter time and that way they'll survive and they'll continue to put on new growth look at this new growth coming all the way up this tree off of last year's old growth so that's it thanks for watching this tour i hope you really enjoyed this urban backyard transformation uh, the clients were fantastic to work with this transformation has really been life-changing for them thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.